Over the past few weeks, I've been working on building a dog run, a section of the backyard where our pups can take care of business and hang out without us having to worry about them going under gaps in the bigger fence. The final step has been installing a four foot high vinyl fence. Other than a few errors on my part, this has gone surprisingly well, up until the final post that's meant to be flush with the house. A little over a foot down, I ran into our concrete foundation and that complicated everything. I didn't want to attach the post to the house based on everything I read online, had no interest drilling a post into my foundation, and leaving a six to eight inch gap sort of defeated the purpose of this whole thing. Scraping through the web for ideas, I came across a Reddit post where someone suggested having the fence cantilever between the final post to the house. Suddenly it was like a light bulb went off and I knew what I had to do. Well, sort of. Let's get into it. Step one was to turn this end post into a line post, which is just a fancy way of saying I needed holes on both sides of it so that way I can push the horizontal rail through the entire post. Looking around, I came across a set of templates for a whopping $895. Granted, this came with a case, a router, and some extra tools, but looking around, I felt like this was something that I could whip up. I'd purchased a Makita compact router a while back to upgrade a CNC spindle that never ended up happening, so it's been just sitting around collecting dust, which was lucky for me. Other than a little bit on a CNC machine, I've never used a trim router, so I had to do a bit of research on what the best end mill was going to be to get. What I determined was that I needed the slimmest trim router bit I could find, with the key thing being it must have a bearing on the top. Or bottom, depending on how you're looking at it. The side with the shank that goes into the router needs a bearing. The bearing is what rides around your template so that you can cut out the contour of the shape on it. I ran down to my local Home Depot, walked to the router section, and was blown away to find not one single bit with a bearing on the shank side. It seems like it's much more common to have a router stationary inside of a table that you push your material in than it is to have a router that you're holding in your hand that you're then pushing into the material. With the exception, of course, being a CNC machine. So I ordered a pack of four from Amazon and moved on to working on the template. My original plan was just to model up something that I would then go and 3D print, but given the fairly simplistic geometry of this part and me wanting to get it as quickly as possible, it felt like the perfect job for a laser. I just assembled the Creality Falcon 2 Pro a couple of weeks ago that came with a massive 40 watt diode that should be well up for this task. The first step was to measure the existing opening on the post. I grabbed my metric ruler and wrote down 40 millimeters for the width and 140 millimeters for the height. The corners for the rectangle cutout were rounded and although it was complete overkill, I found a set of radius measurement gauges that I quickly cut out. Using these, I determined the radius was roughly 3 16th of an inch and I was off to draft my template. Hopping into Shaper 3D, I created a rectangle using the measurements I took. Depending on the diameter of the bearing compared to the diameter of your bit, you may need to scale your shape bigger or smaller to account for this. I lucked out and it was very close to a one-to-one, -one, so I went with the exact shape that I measured. The post is five inches by five inches or 127 millimeters, so I made the width 150 millimeters. I then created 10 by 100 millimeter blocks that would be used to keep the horizontal positioning of the template on the post. I added three M3 holes to the template and the side blocks, which is what I'll use to attach all the pieces together. If this was going to be 3D printed, I would extrude the shape and add some additional detail, but since we're going to be laser cutting this, all I need is to export the sketch. I highlighted the sketches and exported them as a DXF file. For the material, I have some 6mm MDF sheets that I plan to use. I'd ran a material test in Lightburn for the radius tool, but that was cut out of 3mm basswood. Instead of running another material test, I tried halving my speeds and doubling my power. This didn't quite work, but running a second pass, I got a fairly clean cut in the MDF sheet. Happy with my settings, I opened up the DXF file, removed a few reference lines, created an array of the riser blocks, and it was in that moment I realized I completely forgot to model my curved edges into the rectangle. I'd actually never done that to a sketch in Shaper 3D, but I had done it to a drawing in Lightburn, so I converted the 3 16ths of an inch to millimeters 
and clicked on the four corners with the radius tool. Now it was time to cut out the template. So I hit start, sat back and watched as the design came to life in just a few short minutes. I assembled the original version and it discovered two things. First, I needed to make it taller to give me room for a clamp. And second, I needed to move the holes inward just a millimeter or two to give it a tighter grip when pushed onto the post. The second revision looked great and it was time to put it into action. Since I'd never used a router or the bits, I grabbed a piece of cutoff to see what it was like. I started by drilling out a hole to give me an entry point and turned on the router. The router was set to number five, which looked like it translated to 27,000 RPM. And based on the few graphs I found online, that seemed like the correct range to be in for the bit I was using that was well under an inch in diameter. Well, the second I turned it on and put it into the vinyl, it ping ponged around that hole. I think it was a combination of just the power of the router and maybe the bit that I was using. It felt somewhat difficult to control and like it wanted to be pulled into the material. It took a few adjustments, but once I got a firm grip on it, I was able to make a fairly clean cut that looked promising. I measured from the top of the post to the top of the existing opening, then I flipped it over and marked it with a Sharpie at that point. I popped the template on, clamped it down, drilled out my hole, then it was time for the moment of truth. The first cut went surprisingly well, too well, so well that I had to just, I had to mess something up. One of the corners had a little bit of melted vinyl, which I should have just taken a hand file to to clean up. But instead, I decided to, after the camera was off, turn the router back on and go in and just try to clean up that little edge. Well, in a matter of seconds, it ping ponged back and forth between the template and the other side of the opening that I had just cut. The result was a few chunks taken out of it and some jagged edges. I was pretty sad about this, but I also quickly realized this was going to be facing the house and there's only going to be a six to eight inch gap. So unless you shoved your head in there, you weren't going to be able to see it. It also wasn't load bearing. So I pretty quickly got over it and moved on. Determined to redeem myself on the second cut, I took my time and overall did a better job. Still not perfect, but progress is progress. I also tried to make myself feel a little better by pointing out the imperfect cut that came on the post from the factory. So now that I had my post, everything else went smoothly, right? Well, no. The fence isn't meant to be cantilevered and we're modding the fence, which sounds silly to say out loud. Trying to get the horizontal beam into both posts when I had no wiggle room against the house was incredibly challenging. I ended up having to bend things in ways that weren't meant to be bent, and my second cut, which I was proud of, had another chunk or two taken out of it from trying to shove the horizontal rail through it. I also had to cut the top horizontal rail, so now the picket that I cut sticks out a little bit at the top instead of being perfectly flush. This all really bugged me at first, but again, the cracks weren't going to be visible, that section is really not load bearing, and I had a plan. I picked up some silicone caulking that I'll apply around the two openings that I cut out. This will both hide the cracks from me and keep any water that may try to make its way in from doing so. For the picket that's not flush, I ordered a one and a half by one and a half inch aluminum U-channel that I'll cut down to size, paint white, slide over the end, and drill into place to make it flush. This has been a huge learning experience. And of course, like anything, knowing what I know now after doing it, there are a ton of things that if I could go back, I would do differently. But I'm quite pleased with the end result and it serves its ultimate purpose of keeping the dogs in an area when we aren't out there to watch them. I'm really happy with how the laser cut template turned out. And again, the only thing I saw out there was the really expensive template kit that I previously showed. I think that's geared clearly more towards a fence install contractor, but with some tweaks, I do think that the template I created could be as good of an option. The main thing that's needed is more experience with the router. Having never used the tool before, I should have done more than just that initial simple test cut. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you maybe learned something and that it potentially inspired you to take on a project of your own. Trying new things is always at least a little bit intimidating and mistakes are going to happen, but it's almost always a fantastic learning experience. Being able to use 3D printing, or in this case, laser cutting for a practical project is one of the main reasons I love having access to these tools. Let me know in the comments down below what some of your favorite practical projects, prints, laser cuts are that you've done. And also let me know what your thoughts are on this video. I'd love to do some occasional more projecty style videos like this in the future. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description 
description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dano from Modbot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.